This video is brought to you by Simply. Get paid to help candidates applying for roles in your industry. Simply connects applicants with offer holders for career advice that works. Launching soon. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back. Hey, do the intro. Do the intro, fam. What is going on YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. Today, we've got 18 high of you interview questions accompanied with lots of bullet points on how best to answer them. Now, these interview questions have come up quite consistently on the Goldman Sachs High View interviews. And so if you are ever going to apply for a spring week internship or grad scheme, these are likely going to come across your path. So what we're going to do today is go through them and hopefully help you increase your chances of success at that interview stage. For anyone new here, make sure you smash the subscribe button. I've got a solid list of videos coming out in June, along with lots of good sponsors and offers for all of you. And if you are a loyal viewer of the channel, make sure you smash the like button for the algorithm. And without any further ado, let's get straight to the video. Why do you want to work for Goldman Sachs and what makes you suitable? So on my notes here, I've got, look, you want to do your research and be able to get across why Goldman Sachs stands out to you as a candidate compared to every other competitor or bank in the industry. So what this means is you want to know what stands out for, for you about the bank. Is there any specific initiatives, charity initiatives, strengths in a particular area? Is their asset management division particularly strong? Is their M&A business particularly strong? The area that you want to go into, are Goldman very good at that? And so that's attractive for you as a potential candidate to build a career. Find something specific about the firm that you can't say about other firms and then use that to talk about in your interview. Did you go to an event or did you meet someone from the organization that gave you a unique insight or that stood out and so made you wanna to apply to this firm compared to any other firm? It's small things like this, small events, unique events, unique insights that will stand out and help you kind of get the message or get your interest in the firm across in the interview. Always remember that the more specific, the better it is to help you answer the question. And feel free to name drop if you met someone at an event or if you spoke to someone online, LinkedIn, someone that went to your uni and they work at the firm now, mention that to the interviewer say you know this person who's a colleague at goldman sachs spoke very highly of the culture blah 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 but always remember the more specific your answer the better anyone can say the culture is great i've heard this this and this but if you can give something specific to the firm specific to the division and how that ties to you and your personal interests then naturally you build a connection between you and the firm and that will come across in the interview all right question number i feel like this is going to be a long video um, having said that, timestamps below so you can skip around as you feel free and as you wish. Um, walk me through your CV. Okay, you need to know your CV inside out, back to front. Every event, every single thing that's happened on your CV, everything that you've listed, you want to be confident talking about it at length. Reason why is a lot of people sometimes lie on their CV. And so when they're in an interview and someone quizzes them on their resume, it's like, oh, tell me a bit about this experience and the candidate can't talk at length about it and then it just doesn't look too good what other notes did i put here story tell talk to anything unique or interesting when you're walking someone through your cv in any interview if you can story tell very well you will be increasing your chances of getting an offer because humans like to listen to stories it means the chances of them zoning out and getting bored are less likely if you can paint a picture so this experience it came about by doing this, this and this. It was a great experience because of X, Y, Z. I developed these key competencies, communication skills, interpersonal skills, relationship building skills, analytical skills, all competencies that are relevant for a job at Goldman Sachs. And as a result, it led to this, this and this. If you can paint that picture and do it nicely, it just helps the interviewer understand your story and it allows them to follow you much better than just if you can't give any context or detail around any of your experiences or anything on your CV. Talk about interesting things on your CV. If you want a scholarship, if you want a certain award, if you did something unique to you, then mention that and tell them, you know, once again, going back to storytelling, how did it come about? What made you do it? What was the result? Always focus on results because banking and the world of finance are results oriented. They are very results focused. So try and focus on that and mention results as and when possible. Five minutes already and we're on two questions. I'm gonna be blitzing through these now, yeah? All right, 
Question number three, are you a leader or a team member and why? This is, it seems, seems, it sounds like a trick question. Do you wanna be a leader? Do you wanna be a team member? What do you see yourself as? Best approach to answer this question is to understand that the situation is more important. In some situations, you will be required to be a leader. You might have an example at university, you were working on a project with a few course mates and you had to step up and be the leader because there was a lack of direction, blah, blah, blah. Other times, when you enter the world of work, you understand that you're an intern, you're an analyst, you're just getting started. There's a designated leader in the team already, a managing director, for example. And so it's more important and it makes more sense for you to be a team player in that scenario. So to answer this question, say, you know, you believe you can be a leader in some instances and a team member in others. It just depends on the situation and your assessment of that scenario, and then you act accordingly. All of this stuff, it just, a good answer comes from a thoughtful process. So if, like most candidates that get an offer, have a thoughtful process, they're very structured in their approach to tackling problems, and you wanna get that across in these interviews. Always, if you're gonna give a point, if you're gonna say something, back it up with evidence or an example, give the explanation, and then at the end, once again, give the result. What was the result that you achieved? Question four, talk about how you would integrate a new teammate. So personally, if I was to integrate a new teammate into the team, I would go for an informal catch up with them, go for a coffee, go for, you know, tea, coffee, whatever it is, get to know them on a personal level, 30 minutes, one hour, just chat to them, let them know, you know, what the team is like, what the culture is like, let them know that they can trust me, let them know that I'm there if they have any questions. You wanna make them feel like they are a part of the team already, you wanna make them comfortable, you want to, you know, make it as easy of a transition as possible. You want to find out a bit about their working style. You have to understand everyone's got a different working style and everyone isn't the same. And so the sooner you can find out their working style, how they operate, how they're most effective and happy in their work, then you can accommodate to that. So I think that's quite important. Question five, what do you do outside of the office? Try not to be boring and say, oh, I'm passionate about finance. I just read finance books outside of work, blah, blah. No one cares about that. If you've got any interesting hobbies or things that you do outside of work, talk about those because people want to see the real you. In this day and age, people don't want robots working next to them. They want, you know, real humans who have outside interests. And if you're an interesting person, you're less likely to bore the person that you're sitting next to at work for 10, 11, 12 hours a day. Question six, how would you describe your work ethic? Once again, give a point, give evidence, so an example, and then explain it, and then the result. So you need to understand, when you're applying to a firm like Goldman, the work ethic is very high. Everyone is on it. They're very motivated, hardworking, ambitious individuals. And so this question wants to see if you believe you will fit that culture. What you can do as a student to show or display your strong work ethic is touch on strong grades touch on strong work experiences that you've got in the world of finance, for example, how you got those good grades. It required discipline, hard work, avoiding distractions, so on and so forth. Basically showing that you achieved something through discipline, hard work, and a strong work ethic. That will help you answer that question. Question seven is what are you passionate about? Now, once again, it goes back to, do you have hobbies or what do you do outside of work? You wanna talk about something you're passionate about and how you became passionate about it the time, commitment, and dedication that it requires for you to spend every week or every month, whatever it might be, and just talk about it. These type of questions just wanna see the individual that you are outside of a work-related context, and the interviewer just wants to find out a bit more about you. So don't be shy and don't be you know, scared to talk about something that's completely unrelated to work. This question wants you to do that. So have something in mind that you're passionate about, ready for the interview that if this question comes up, you'll be confident and comfortable talking about. What are the key personality traits that make a good investment banker? So this question is specifically for the investment banking division. So on these type of questions, you wanna to touch on two things. So one are the key competencies, the key skills. So attention to detail, analytical skills, interpersonal skills, communication, teamwork, blah, 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 blah. And then the second is the domain expertise. Someone who's gonna be a good investment banker knows about their domain, knows about their business. If they're working in M&A, if they're working in debt capital markets, whatever it is, they would have a good grasp and understanding about what's going on in their market, in their region, so on and so forth. So if you can get a those two points 
that answers half of the question. The second part is, you know, backing it up with why you fill those boots. So you should touch on a previous example where you developed or displayed analytical skills or attention to detail, so on and so forth. And then the domain expertise section, you can touch on, you know, being part of the econ society or being the president of XYZ society. I'm developing my knowledge when it comes to debt capital markets, equity investing, blah, 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 blah. So touch on, answer their question and then back it up with why you're suitable for those specific skills and areas. Can you give me a time when you've had to overcome something difficult? Classic question comes up in 99% of interviews. The best way to answer this type of question is point, evidence, explanation, result. So mention your point, mention, it's storytelling once again. Give a point when you had to overcome something difficult. Might have been in uni, set the scene, university, previous work, internship, whatever it is. And then you're gonna give your evidence and explanation. You're gonna talk them through the situation, what was going through your mind, what was going on. And then you're gonna say how you acted upon this, what did it require you to do? And then at the end, you're gonna talk about the result achieved by doing X, Y, Z. So you give your point, you talk about evidence and explanation, what you did, how was your thought process? then you end up with a result. And that's the basic way to answer these questions. It's kind of like the STAR technique, situation, task, action, result. It talks you through the process, it creates a story, it helps the interviewer understand you a lot better than if you did so without any structure. Question 10, what are the markets doing right now? Have some sort of insight into what's going on in financial markets. You could do that by keeping up to scratch with your commercial awareness, whether it's the Financial Times, Bloomberg, the News, Google Finance, Yahoo Finance. Just make sure you know what's going on in financial markets, specifically to regions and products that are related to the area of the bank or the division or the role that you're applying to. Because if you don't know these things and other candidates do, then it's kind of not a good look for you. What's important here is don't just have some sort of an insight, but have an opinion as well. Having an opinion, being able to conversate on a specific topic immediately makes you stand out. It makes you more interesting and more prepared and impressive compared to 99% of all the other candidates who don't do that. Question 11, why would a liquidation model be relevant right now? This is another investment banking question. A liquidation model is, off the top of my head, I'm assuming it's basically where a company is better off from liquidating all of its assets. So it doesn't see any future growth potential, it's, future isn't looking bright. It's just best to split up the company, sell off all of its assets for cash. Reason for this is because, yeah, the future isn't looking bright for the company. There's nothing that the company would want to do. No one wants to buy the company, so on and so forth. That's a very specific question to investment banking division. Um, so don't worry about that if you aren't applying to the IBD. Question 12, walk me through a time you persisted through a challenge. This goes back to storytelling, talk them through the situation. What was the challenge? You know, then talk about your thought process. What were you thinking about? Did you think um, of two different routes? Which one did you take? Why did you take that route? Because you took this route, what was the end result? So once again, start storytelling, situation, task, what action did you take, and then the end result. A lot of these questions, a lot of competency-based questions follow the same structure. You've got a story tell and you know, end with a result. What action did you take? End with a result. It's very simple stuff. If you prepare, it's very easy. If you're not prepared, it could seem so tough. Question 13, tell me about a transaction that you've been following recently. Another investment banking question. Um, have a few deals or transactions in mind that you can talk about. Once again, don't just state facts. You wanna have an opinion. This, this, and this happened. But personally, I think that X, Y, Z, if you can give your opinion, it doesn't matter if your opinion is right or wrong. There are no right or wrong opinions. Your opinion is yours, you own it. So feel free to say it. And then they might, you know, kind of play devil's advocate and if you can if you're in a situation in an interview where they're playing devil's advocate and you can you know it's like a tennis match it goes back and forth that's a very good positive interaction to have in any interview when you are talking about a specific or a recent deal or transaction or something in the news that you know they've asked you to talk about make sure you choose something that's specific to the division or the firm that you're applying to not something completely random and then make sure it's something that you're personally interested in because when it's when you do those two things it just helps your answer go to the next level trust me question 14 one of my favorites you see a friend or you see your friend cheating in an exam what do you 
do. Personally, you shouldn't snake them. Don't snake on your friends. Don't go and rat on them. Don't go, you know, ruin their chances of getting a good grade. It's only an exam. It's not the end of the world. But very important, what you should answer is not what I just said. This is like an ethical, moral question that a lot of interviews ask because they want to see what the candidate says and they want to, they're basically testing the waters of your ethical stance or your moral stance. So the right answer is you will report them to the head teacher or whoever, the professor, right? Because basically this question is testing if you were at work and you saw someone doing something that they should not be doing at work, you should go and report that person to compliance. And you know, no one wants to be a rat, no one wants to be a snake, but in the world of banking, finance, all of that, if you are doing nothing about it, you're part of the problem, right? And in general, if you see someone getting beaten up on the street and you do nothing about it, you know, yes, you might wanna go and intervene, it might not be safe to do so, whatever, but you should at least call the police or try and intervene in some way, shape or form, because if you don't, or if someone's being racially abused, I could give so many examples, someone's being racially abused, if you stay silent, you're part of the problem. Silence is compliance, right? So in this situation, you see your friend cheating, the right answer is you would report them or let the professor know because they are. the question is testing how you would act in the world of work. Are you gonna be corrupt? Are you gonna be morally um, not up to the standard of the culture that the firm expects? Are you gonna be ethically, um, you know, uh, are you gonna be negative from an ethical standpoint if you answer this question poorly and you say yeah they're my friends so i'll let them cheat whatever it's not going to look good on you and even if you answered every other question very well i honestly think this question can jeopardize your chances of success in an interview if you don't answer it correctly so just think about that one it's quite an important one question 15 you want to take on a new research project but it will be demanding what do you do i put you want to assess your current workload you want to plan accordingly you want to be honest with yourself. You don't want to take on too much work at the detriment of all of your other work, all of the other things on your to-do list. You want to prepare, if you do take it on, prepare well and execute only if you know you're going to do a good job at it. Um, so only take on work if you've got capacity for it. This is very important. Say, yeah, I'll take on work if I know it's not going to reduce the quality of my other things on the to-do list. Um, this shows that you can manage your workload, you are quite organized, you plan ahead, you know what you can or should or shouldn't get yourself into. The best interns and list graduates, they are very well organized, they know not to take on too much work just to impress everyone, they know their limits. The worst are those who take on too much work and then miss all the deadlines and then produce poor quality work. You don't want to be the latter type. Question 16. You have a deadline but are missing information, what do you do? Good question. What would you do? Let me know in the comments below. You've got a deadline, but you're missing information. Do you ignore the deadline and wait till you get all the info and then submit? Or do you just submit for the deadline? The right answer, personally, what I think you should do is prioritize the deadline. Imagine you've got a $50 million pitch and you need to submit an RFP. An RFP is a request for proposal. You need to submit that by a given deadline. You're not gonna hang around and wait for some information if the deadline's fast approaching. You're gonna make sure you get it in early. Early is on time, on time is late. You're gonna get it in early and meet the deadline. You miss the deadline, you miss the opportunity. So it doesn't matter how good the piece of work is. So don't miss the deadline. Try and get that across in the interview. Say you will always prioritize a deadline um, because that is what the client has set and you should adhere to the client's expectations. Question 17. Talk about a time when you had to deal with a bad teammate. Once again, it goes back to storytelling. You want to talk about the situation, talk about your personal thought process. What did you think? How did you approach this problem? You want to talk about the action that you took after you had some time to think about it. And once again, what we're going to do, we're going to talk about the result. Why? Because banking is a results focused industry. So you're going to talk about your mindset, the action and the result. And that's how you're going to storytell I've said this like 20 times in this video, but honestly, it's that simple. Just focus, have some good examples of stories in your pocket, whether it's at college, uni, internships, work experience, problems, challenges, how you overcame them, what were the results, have a few in your pocket. Sometimes you can use the same example for different types of questions. Um, so for example, I was the captain of football team. I could use that for teamwork. 
questions. I could use that for leadership questions. I could use that for problem solving questions. There was a difficult player on the team. I took him aside, spoke to him, understood what his problem was, realized this was the steps I needed to take, blah, 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 implemented it into the team. The result was we won X, Y, Z. Simple, simple examples across multiple different questions and competencies. That's the trick. Question number 18. How do you follow authority and if you would listen or act against a questionable command? The rule is if you're unsure, always check. If you're unsure, always ask someone, someone more senior than you. You want to get this type of thinking across in the interview you would say oh if i was unsure about something i'd make sure i double check with someone more senior than me if not my manager so it shows them that you're not just going to try and tackle a problem or do something uncomfortably on your own that's very important always think of the bigger picture have some context in mind ask yourself you know this one decision this one problem where does it fit in to the wider goal of our team how does it contribute to the wider projects that we are working on how does it impact potential clients or prospects think about the bigger picture the person interviewing you will appreciate that this intern or this graduate can think about the bigger picture i like that this person will fit into the team you want to get them thinking like that it's very important small things big impact always always if you're unsure about something if someone's asked you to do something and you think this seems a bit dodgy this doesn't seem right talk to your mentor talk to someone in your team if you're unsure always check that's the rule if you don't you'll be surprised like you can get in a lot of trouble even if you meant no harm the expectation is if something smells wrong or seems dodgy then you should raise it raise the concern if you made it to the end of the video well done that was 18 interview questions i honestly hope that you took something from this video and you can apply it in any future interviews Thank you for making it this far. If you're new around here, make sure you subscribe. If you haven't already, smash the like button for the algorithm. I've got a few solid videos coming out this month and I've got some great sponsors to offer offers for you. And yeah, we're on 80,000 subscribers, which is nuts. I remember I started this channel not too long ago, about two years ago. Um, and yeah, to hit 10,000 subs was mad, but now we want to go for 100,000 subscribers. And yeah, just thank you and i will see you in the next video peace